here and all the watermen here. So I wanted to, uh, by request, I wanted to do a quick tour of my fish tanks and everything that's going on here so you guys can see a little bit of everything. Uh, we'll start with, let me see if he comes out real quick. Uh, actually, there he is right there. We'll start with the pea puffer tank. Uh, excuse the algae, there's been a bit of an imbalance issue, but I'm just kind of letting it play out. It is slowly going away on its own, so we'll see if that happens. If not, chemical will be the next round. Uh, but here we've got a pea puffer who decided that he was going to hide. Uh, he is sleeping, with, or not sleeping, he is plunking uh, with uh, three Corridoras. The lights are about to go out, so they pretty much uh, hide right then and there. Everything in here is all natural. It's all uh, real plants with the swords in there and the red rock, plus the Penplax filter there. Over here is my figure eight puffers. This is the brackish tank. There is, there's actually two figure eight puffers here and they leave each other alone. You know, they can get pretty territorial, uh, but not these guys. They've done really well and they are bunking with their, there we go, the bumblebee gobies. There's about, I think four or five bumblebee gobies in here. Oh, there's the other one and he's hiding there. So that's what it's every time it's nighttime, they already know it's uh, time to be, everything be put up. Now this one is half planted. So we've got a few Anubias here. We've got a Java fern over there. Uh, for the most part though, it's a lot of fake other than again, algae. This one just really got hit with algae. Um, but the reason is, if you guys know puffers, you know they will destroy plants, especially as they try to take snails or they swim around or they get bored and just they just, they just trash the whole darn tank. Uh, so it's definitely a good idea to have some fake plants in there, soft of course. Uh, the other thing is that a lot of plants don't really seem to do well in brackish water. You can see how parts of the plants come apart with that brackish. But again, that's the uh, figure eight. Uh, this is actually my wife's tank. She aquascaped this one and she picked all the rocks and everything on there. A uh, really nice uh, two-tone substrate that she chose in here. Now the filter for this one is we're using, there we go right there, that's the Fluval 306. I do have a bubbler in there and I use all digital thermometers as far as like actual battery operated ones. These here are fantastic. I'm a big fan of these thermometers and they're about as accurate as they get. Next, we have the Red Claw tank. Uh, this tank was originally Red Claw and uh, Fiddlers, but I think there's only one fiddler they obviously wound up fighting. The reason this tank was established was because when I first started, I had these tanks in a regular freshwater. Later learning that my LFS was full of it and they are brackish and they need to be able to get up once in a while for actual oxygen. So uh, I quickly put them in another tank and this one is powered with, you can see the little bubbles coming up there, just a regular sponge filter. This is Dexter's tank. Uh, Dexter's tank is all, where is Dexter at? Okay, there he is, being his little grouchy self there. So Dexter, along with his Corridora friends, he's got four Corridoras, has a school of about 12 neon Tetras, you can see hiding there towards the back. Again, all uh, real plants. Uh, there was an issue you can actually see there with some of the brown algae. That is actually a product of a uh, semi-tank crash. One of the, uh, the UV filter, uh, a good UV filter on it, uh, the bulb pretty much busted uh, on the inside. It was rusting out and leaching rust into the tank. Luckily, I didn't lose uh, you know any major livestock as far as you know De uh, Dexter's okay. I did lose a couple of the neon tetras, unfortunately, uh, but. They look pretty happy now, especially now it's been cleaned out. So Dexter's Tank is using the Penplax Cascade 600. Wonderful filter, I'm a big fan of it. And all the lights in here are the Fluval uh, Aquasky 2.0. Now let's go into my Glowfish Tank. I mean, there's more than just Glowfish now, but this whole hobby started about a year and a half ago, maybe two years now, with a simple 10 gallon with some Glowfish, which you can still see here, some of the original Glowfish that I had. Look at this massive chunk right here. Uh, I'm a big fan of the Glowfish. No, it's not cruel. If they have babies, the babies will also glow. They're not injected with dye. That's never at all how it worked. But anyhow, this tank has changed quite a bit. Um, well, I, I'm having an issue with the, some of the plants that were melting due to some black beard algae. I'm telling you, algae just really 
I just have bad luck with it. Uh, but it's been slowly under control. Uh, this tank has a lot of the glow tetras. Um, I'm just putting in tiger barbs. The tiger barbs were slowly wiping out one after the other, and I couldn't figure out why. To this day, I can't figure out why. But there's a lot more tiger barbs. Maybe it's because this guy keeps chasing them all. Um, lots of quarries. I've got panda, Julie quarries. I've got the standard emerald, green quarries. A lot of Amazon sorge, too. Oh, there's one of the Julie quarries. And then there is Flotsam. His buddy Jetsam, unfortunately, had passed away. He was, they were they're huge though. They're almost about eight inch, the uh, weather loaches. And then there's another baby weather loach that I just included in here because I just don't want them to be by themselves. They're very social creatures. At night, you're gonna see the coolie loaches coming out. Lots of the black coolie loaches and the striped coolie loaches. And also a Fluval 306 in here. Plus battery backup and everything for each one of these tanks. And there's one of the Mean Green Killing Machines, or whatever they're called, UV filters. So again, we've got Tetras, we've got some uh, Danios over here, we've got the Tiger Barbs of different varieties, and my Ghost Catfish, some of my original fish that I had with my Glowfish, and they were doing so good. I mean, just look at that beautiful clear color. Uh, <laughs> and I believe it's all the ones that I have in here. So lots of Amazon swords, Anubias. Look at the size of these Anubias here. And then baby Anubias that have just branched out. I never even planted that there. It just appeared there. So that's always a good thing. All right, and then over here, we've got a couple 20 gallon uh, beta tanks that have been divided. Uh, so let's take a look at the first one here. This is Jet, who is just kind of hanging out there by his leaf. And this one just features a lot of the beautiful gray slate rock banana plants. Some of the tall lily pads there you can see. On the other side, I have not named him yet, but another beautiful blue betta that I got from a friend of mine. These plants were almost dying, but they are coming back to life. And then featuring some beautiful red rock and uh, lava rock as well, big chunks of lava rock and also a cascade filter. This one has two uh, of the uh, heaters that for 10 gallon tanks. Uh, the other one only has one for a 20, but instead of buying two 20s, I just figured like 110, 110, water temperature is still a nice even 78. I don't have any quarries in here yet. That's on my next thing. I'm gonna get some Julie's to put in here. Uh, we've got some of the regular emeralds in here and then about four or five black coolie loaches. Next, we've got Swim Shady. Beautiful Dumbo Betta with cotton candy type colors. So we have the purple, white, uh, blue, like the aquamarine blue with some emerald and albino quarries. And uh, a few of these tanks, this one here, this one and Dexter's also has autos. Love the autos. Uh, this one had some issue with um, cyanobacteria, but some um, uh, maricin, which is erythromycin, that took care of it. Uh, Chemiclean did not help one bit, uh, which they say is there's erythromycin on it, but I'm starting to believe there isn't. It might be something else, but straight up erythromycin just killed it. So that's good. Uh, so yeah, there he is there. And then I have not named this guy yet. I'm kind of sticking towards Emerald. I know such unique names, beautiful uh, white green and blue, depends on how the light hits them. Uh, but the radiance of color is just stunning on this one with some little baby emerald quarries. And then all real plants, that's not a real piece of uh, wood there. Uh, but I just like how that turned out. That was just something I just came up last minute. I'm happy with the look of it. Uh, this is all real rock as well. So not only do we have the cascade, it's taking care of filtration, but the rock here is really helping out with growing that beneficial bacteria. Now, before we go look at the salt waters, uh, I am having an issue with my coral with some uh, brown jelly. So this one's in quarantine right now. There's my beautiful green gonopora. My blue gonopora is down there currently with an alveopora. He's been fragged. Now, I did not throw the frag pieces. They are here as well. I gotta get the filter set up for this one next. Uh, I've got filters that have been cultured, so I gotta move them over here. But um, yeah, I'm using my RV Reef LEDs. I've got one here and one there. So this is my temporary quarantine section. 
Uh, I think eventually I'm gonna move all this out of the way and I'm gonna just create some small frag racks and start just, you know, harvesting coral and, you know, see what happens. Let's go ahead and take a look at the next one, which is my bedroom tank. So this is the brand new tank that uh, I just set up. I actually bought this one from somebody else that had the entire kit for sale. Uh, I definitely got way more than my money's worth. So let's go ahead and take a look at what's in here. This is a Red Sea Reefer 170 with the AI Prime on top. Uh, yeah, it came with a yellow tang. Fully aware a yellow tang does not belong in this tank and I'm eventually going to move him into my uh, bigger tank. But this guy and the Snowflake Oscillaris have become really good buddies. The Snowflake's anemone, um, he said it's a long tentacle anemone, which worries me because it's white. So I'm starting to think it's a white sandalt anemone. If it is a long tentacle anemone, I've got to trade him out because that thing's going to get huge and does not belong in a tank of this size. This coral, clearly not doing so good. Uh, so I gave it a small peroxide bath, Reef RX, and uh, it is starting to come out. There is a Zoa in here that the snails are currently on top of. I just added some snails and they are cleaning so much of that hair algae out, so that's working out really well. If this doesn't go away, once the tank is settled, I'm gonna do Fluco. I haven't done any Fluco yet because I don't know how much bacteria died during transport. Taking a look here at the sump. You'll see the uh, overflow system. It's a gravity driven, not overflow, sorry. Uh, gravity driven ATO. There's the Red Sea, cyber power battery, the Phoenix 200 watt heater, simplicity, skimmer, the ice cap gyre pump. Um, I did create so like a refugium with some rocks in here. I have a bag of carbon, again, new tank. Just wanna make sure, put some carbon in there until I get a reactor put in place. And I gotta figure out where the hell I'm gonna put a reactor. Um, there's a doser, which I'm not dosing this tank. There, there's really no need for it to happen. So that is this tank here. Big fan of it. Look at that beautiful shimmer there. And um, there is a lawnmower Blenny. Let's find him. There he is. I love Blennies. It's my absolute favorite type of fish. Blennies and gobies. They just really make the tank feel different. And now let's go to the living room. Now it's almost nighttime for these guys. So you'll have to excuse the fact that uh, Half the coral are already closed and everything, but I do have some photos and stuff that I'll put in this video. This is my 75 uh, gallon salt water. This was my first salt water ever. Lots of different coral in there. There's the clown with his anemone over there. Beautiful uh, rose bubble tip, but the, co uh, the colors I really wish I could show them to you on camera. Um, I have the lights on the other one programmed a little bit different than this one. I don't want to sit here and startle them, but just beautiful pink, greens, and blues. Got some uh, green hair. Uh, oh, there we go. Not green hair, sorry. I've got some GSP in here, uh, which is supposed to grow, grow like a weed, but so far it hasn't, so yay for that. Uh, my Ghanis would usually go here. I have my war coral. Um, I believe this one, they say it's called a bejeweled uh, favia. Uh, this one is a neon green torch that I got from the pet store that was close to dead, but I'm slowly reviving it. And then just there's beautiful Akins here, Toadstool, Pally, Sonica Hedgehog, more Pallies, Pulsing Xenia, lots of fireworks, torches, Pink Connie, which is receded right now, uh, Bubble, uh, you can see there the uh, Bubble Coral, Frog Spawn, I have uh, Duncans, Blastos, few leptos over there, green pallies of death, blue pallies, trumpet coral, when I got that one just a, not that long ago, only have about three or four heads in it, and now it's just growing like a weed. And the only SPS I have, which is a bird's nest, uh, you'll see the chromies, the Midas Blenny, the clown, the, where is he at, my, uh, come on, diamond goby, I've got three firefish in here, and there's also an emerald. Uh, Dragonette. The whole reason I got a salt water is because I wanted an emerald dragonet. And what may be the world's freaking biggest royal grandma. Look at the size of that thing. I know it's kind of hard to see, but he's huge. Come on. There he is. Yeah, so he is massive. And then look at my brain coral. I'm in love with it. Oh, there's the dragonet. Let me actually change the color just slightly so you can see. Okay, so I've got the colors changed as well as some camera settings. You can see the dragonet. Just going to town. You can now see the, co the colors in that brain coral a lot better. Plus the water coral. And he's a pain because he sits there and hosts it, right? But he doesn't let his buddy in there, even though they're, you know, 
attached at the hip, and then he'll go and start hosting everything else. There's my Ganeporo, which is currently receded because I guess it's night night time. And you can see a lot more of it there. There are two gyre power heads on each side there. This is my brine shrimp breeding station. And then I made this thing out of scratch just to hold everything in here. All this is powered via Google Home. And then we've got the sump. So the sump, I've got the uh, Octo 110. That's going to a small refugium, just has some uh, shrimp in here, some hermits, uh, there's an urchin, and then I'm seeding these in case uh, I need to switch out the coral uh, QT. So I'm seeding those with some beneficial bacteria, plus the reactor with GFO and carbon, and then an alk doser right there, plus the Kessel 880. The tunes uh, 5017. And I just got this recommended by Rod from Coral Bargain Warehouse, the Aqua Top heater, which is more appropriately sized for this guy. Next, let's take a look at the killifish. I'm in love with killifish. I got the Golden Wonders. Um, eventually, the Golden Wonders are gonna get too big for this nano tank. This is an eight gallon tank. So they're gonna be moved to the 55 gallon community. Once that happens, this is gonna be dedicated for clown killies because they do stay small. Whereas the Golden Wonders go about four or five inches big. Uh, but I just love their smiling faces. I love their demeanor. And uh, this one here is using a bubble, or, uh, bubble filter, sponge filter, which the sponge, you can see I added some marine or the bio balls in there. I'm not a fan of how it's, how the filter on this works. I don't think it's sucking as much water through there as it should be. So I'll probably eventually just cut that out, uh, keep the bubbler in there just you know to have some sort of uh, aspiration or oxygen exchange rather, excuse me. And then I'm gonna put a pen plax back there. But I'm not a fan of that filter at all. Um, and then super unique right here, of course, is the jellyfish tank with the, there we go, the moon jellyfish. That's what the brine shrimp breeding station is for more than anything else. So that's the tank there. Let's go and take a look at uh, how it all works. All right, so this is my six stage, 150 gallon per day, roadie mixing station. So you've got your membrane, uh, sediment filter, carbon, carbon, and then DI resin one and two. Uh, so this is the water stations here. And the way that it's set up is actually the drain hose for the roadie. Uh, the wastewater is going directly behind the washing machine. And then the other one is just going into the first barrel, barrel one, going into barrel two, the uh, two individual valves that go to the pump over here. Right now it's set to just circulate the salt water barrel. So I have it via Google Home again, just set to program. Uh, to run every couple hour or a couple hours every other day just to keep that salt water mixed but then if I want to bring water to my main area uh, or the tank I'll show you how I do that in just a second so the auto top off is actually coming out of the roadie tank directly that auto top off is going through the walls you can see the hose here for the auto top off and the salt water inlets, I'll show you those in just a second. So that's the auto top off, salt water inlet. These hoses here are for the chiller. Uh, it does get hot in that corner, so there's a chiller in here just to keep everything at a perfect 77 to 78 degrees, no more, no less. So now, if I want to add water, I just have to come in here, turn this one off, and then turn this one on, and then the water comes out of here, which I need to put my little clamp back on, or the little clamp back on here. And that's gonna go directly into that wall right there. So let me show you what that looks like. Let's go back down to the sump. So again, there is the ATON, so it's good there. And I am gonna modify that to not only have, because the tunes has you know two levels of safety, but I'm also gonna do a floating ball just in case, let's say this fails, a siphon forms. I do have a, uh, two siphon brakes installed, but if a siphon does form, then it'll at least manually stop it. 
and then the salt is right here, the inlet end. So all I gotta do is tell uh, G-O-O-G-L-E to turn on the salt water pump, it turns it on and it comes out of there. Otherwise, it just kind of stays floating in here. So we're good there. So yeah, that's uh, about it right there. And that is my fish room. So to recap, got these three here. Oh, that one's ready to go. This one should be dimming down shortly. The jellies right now are on manual. Uh, eventually I'm gonna change that LED to also run off Google Home. In the room, we have the 40 gallon tank right there. And in the office, We've got the puffers, both puffer tanks right there. The dual beta tanks, the dual beta tank, 55 gallon. The other beta tank, the crab tank. Look at these goldfish glow. That is just totally worth it. I'm a big fan of the goldfish, can you tell? And then the quarantine stations for my coral. So yeah, and then there's also a pond outside with hundreds of guppies and daniels out there. So hey, thanks so much for watching guys. Make sure to like, subscribe, and if there's anything that you saw here that you want more information about, please leave a comment below and I'll be happy to do a video on it. Thanks so much for watching. Good night. God bless.